All right, my friends, welcome back to Premier Study and in Investing. We updated the name of the channel. We're looking at Martin Gilbert's work, The History of the 20th Century. We're in part five, which means we're going to be doing chapters nine and ten in this video. Just to kind of catch up where we left off, 1955 Disneyland opened. Poland tries to rid herself of Russians, and they call it their cause. The British leave Egypt. President Nasser becomes the prime minister of Egypt. There was the Warsaw Pact. Hungary withdrew from it. Uh, and they want to be free from Soviet-acquired exports and rid of restrictions uh, on their personal freedoms. Israel invades the Sinai Peninsula. Castro sails with Che Guevara from Mexico to Cuba. Castro accumulates power. Also, Eisenhower, U.S. president, creates a federal highways system that serves as a defensive tool to help move troops and give escape paths to civilians in the state of emergency. That, that brings us to the end of Chapter 8, and we're at 1957. So chapter nine, hopes raised, hopes dashed. So in 1957, Eisenhower asked Congress for money to protect any foreign nation who comes under armed aggression from another communist nation. There was a Hungarian revolution and it was uh, a communist country at that point, Hung Hungary was. The Americans suspected the manipulation by the Soviets. And there was very deep segregation in South Africa, the country of South Africa. The first British colony, the Gold Coast became independent and was renamed Ghana. People from East Germany are fleeing to West Germany as there is uh, no Berlin Wall at this time. So West Germany is improving because American loans and, and free enterprise. And so that's kind of the reason why people were, were choosing to go over to the West, West of Germany. So Chinese struggle to improve rural productivity. So Mao begins the great leap forward that we've always heard about, conscripting peasants for massive irrigation and water control projects. Now, with the men gone, the women are left to do the agricultural work, and the, the slogan was, more, faster, better, cheaper. Six European nations, um, although the British did not compete, signed the Treaty of Rome, which established the EEC, the European Economic Community, known as the Common Market. Also, the same six countries signed the European Atomic Energy Authority, and they call it the Euratom. Now, Asian flu is the worst epidemic in history. Well, that's interesting, especially given 2020. We're talking about all of that. We always hear about the Spanish flu, but the Asian flu is the worst epidemic in history, is what Gilbert writes. Now, the Americans uh, report a clean atomic and hydrogen bomb is impossible. They learned that nuclear warfare was possible, where radiation would be intentionally spread out to cover an area that would be larger than the blast area of using an atomic bomb under its original design. So it's getting a little uh, the dark side of science and, and military warfare. The Soviets and the Americans were developing the ICBMs, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Now both countries are set up defensively. Uh, radar systems to detect these ICBMs. The Soviets launch Sputnik. And then a few months later, Sputnik 2. Now, the Americans get their nuclear submarine to go under the ice of the North Pole and easily uh, they're within missile range of Moscow and in Leningrad. So, meanwhile, the world is discussing how uh, there can be a monitoring and safety program, you know, for nuclear bombs. How can we ensure the longevity of the human race, um, the environment? Very scary stuff, actually. We don't hear much about it, but it's very, actually, very, very scary. The Great Leap Forward has long work hours. This is back in China. Mao, you know, cooperative farms is what they're using. Cooperative farms, you know, probably, yeah, probably no no private property. Uh, but there were problems. There were starvations, there were uprisings, and it, it just didn't seem to be working. 30 million people die from hardship and, and malnutrition. Uh, in China from 1958 to 1961. So yeah, it's, it does not sound like it's working very well at all. The Soviets under Khrushchev opened the largest hydroelectric project in the world on the Volga. Lots of electricity, but there were also ecological problems and evaporation of the Caspian Sea. I wrote, what, what does this mean? How can you, what do you mean? How can it evaporate? It's, it's a whole sea, I guess. I guess it's, um, it could be possible depending upon um, how much water they're moving around possibly. I don't know, evaporation. Maybe look more into that, but good thing to know Caspian Sea is getting smaller. Cars uh, are killing people, left, right, and center. And Gilbert always talks about this at the end of many chapters, uh, especially when he was looking at the wars. He said, okay, you know, so many people died in this war, uh, five times as many were killed by cars, something like that. And so they consider how much uh, this is costing developed nations in terms of, you know, education that they're investing in their citizenry, uh, the training, 
uh, the medical insurance, the medical costs, um, the time off, etc., etc., etc. So cars are, are pretty amazing, but the more cars on the road, a lot of people getting hurt, injured, and killed. Americans create the credit card. Okay, good. Maybe, 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 maybe not. In Cuba, Castro and, uh, and his lieutenant, Argentinian-born Che Guevara, become uh, come in after President uh, Bastia is exiled. So now they're in. They're in Cuba. The Americans are helping Canada and Greece develop nuclear weapons capabilities. The Americans continue to push their agenda to have the most nuclear capability. Then the Dalai Lama goes to the UN to get help for the Tibetan people and for the independence of Tibet. So Tibet is a region in uh, southern China uh, along the Himalayan mountains, just uh, north of the Himalayan chain. Uh, the U.S. Uh, launches Midas II, and they call it a, a spy in the sky. Its aim was to test the idea of having instant notice of the launch of an intercontinental missile. The ability to launch warheads from underwater was also increased. Uh, the, sh the Soviets shoot down an American spy plane. They threaten punishment. The Americans don't give a serious apology. In China, Christians are slaughtered, and a bishop was given a life sentence. There's a, a struggle in America for blacks to vote. So coming into desegregation and civil rights movement, uh, the submarine was is made that can go for several years without refueling. Um, I wonder if that was I wrote. Is that true as far as water? What about the necessities for the crew? What about for food? Uh, but at least the mechanical technology was there. In the United States, JFK, John F. Kennedy beats Richard Nixon. Both men are in their 40s. JFK runs on anti-segregation. A few months into his presidency, a group of men trained by the Americans invade Cuba through the Bay of Pigs. Almost all of them are killed. After a few days of denial, the Americans, they do take full responsibility. JFK starts the Peace Corps. You know, there is fighting in Congo. So the Peace Corps is like a kind of humanitarian actions. Maybe it's some kind of, a, you know, amnesty, humanitarian aid in order to kind of smooth over any hard feelings or maybe maybe it's leverage to deny it, although I don't know, I, would, I shouldn't say that's true, but who knows how that was used um, for good or for bad, but that's kind of what the Peace Corps is. There is fighting in Congo from different sects. You have mercenaries, UN troops, Tashombe is the former Congolese prime minister who is fighting against United Nations troops. The Soviets have a man on in orbit uh, he orbits orbits the Earth, actually, and this is, you know, bad news for the U United States if you're in the space race. Uh, so the Americans have to try to one-up the Soviets. The Americans actually don't match the orbit. Uh, they only send a guy into suborbit for about 15 minutes, but I guess it was spun by the news media, and, and they turned it into some kind of moral booster for the United States. Fortunately, everyone is back testing, but now they're testing H-bombs. Robert McNamara, the Secretary of Defense, told the newspaper that the U.S. had a second strike that was stronger than any other nation's first strike. The South Vietnamese, or in South Vietnam, uh, the American military had economic presence, which was growing. We see that the U.S. intelligence discovers the ability of nuclear missiles and bombers to come from Cuba. Kennedy chose a naval blockade of Cuba. Um, so the missile silos could not be completed, and that was a that was a big, big deal. A lot of people were scared because it's only like 90 miles, about 90 miles from the southern tip of Florida until you hit Cuba. So you know, very, very, very close. In reply, the Soviets wanted what they wanted to trade. They said that they would they would remove their forces from Cuba in exchange for the Americans abandoning their air force station in Turkey. Now the Ayatollah, which means actually the sign of God, Ayah is like a, in Arabic means verse or uh, you could you know, like, like each kind of verse in the Quran is an ayah, uh, but you could also see how if it was if, uh, you know, anyone who would who would say you know hey this is a this is a sign you know this is a sign from God that's what the the Quran is so uh, so ayatollah a sign a sign of God the ayatollah Khomeini was arrested for preaching uh, against the rule of the Shah now Kennedy is committed to staying in Vietnam until the communist guerrilla army is crushed he believes the South Vietnamese are too weak to defend themselves. Now, unfortunately, Kennedy is killed, and they push through his civil rights program. Johnson becomes president and vows not to lose Vietnam. The Berlin Wall is actually completed in 1964, so now some of that um, movement between East and West Germany is no longer, no longer uh, an option for people. They're kind of locked in after 1964. In Vietnam, you have the DMZ that we often hear about, the Demilitarized Zone. Also, the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which ran through Laos for 500 miles. 
um, it's a big supply line. And I mean, it's a big important way for uh, the North Vietnamese to move troops, um, to set up attacks, to uh, move supplies. Uh, and the Americans, they really said that they weren't going to, I mean, from a political or policy standpoint, they said they weren't going to invade, you know, they weren't going to make it a multi-country war. So they weren't going to go into Laos. They weren't going to go um, across the border, across the Vietnamese border. So, I mean, they had bridges, they had hospitals, they had barracks for troops. So it's really, really an advantage for the North Vietnamese. The USS Maddox, a ship, was attacked, which allowed Johnson his opportunity to enter the war. So now, you know, the United States, um, they're in. China detonates their first atomic bomb. The Olympic Games were in Tokyo, and it's a, another state where great, great powers are able to compete. And this time, it is the U.S. who takes more golds than the USSR. Uh, it's televised this time, and so it was a big deal. It had bigger coverage, more eyes on it. Japan becomes uh, great at making ships, great at shipbuilding. The U.S. does uh, an underground nuclear bomb in Mississippi. Interesting. Didn't know that. Also, the KKK, uh, this is the Ku Klux Klan, a white, super white supremacy group. Um, when Martin Luther King goes into Salem, people are fighting for the black right to vote. So this is a big, a big thing in the South, the slave states, or historically the slave states. Obviously, um, slavery had been over for a long time. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin, what is that? It's a resolution passed by Congress. It was allowed uh, Johnson to retaliate, so uh, it's related to the Vietnam War. So after the Gulf of Tonkin, now Johnson, he had his, uh, he had a situation, what was that ship name? USS Maddox. Now he's got the green light from Congress to retaliate. The Americans dropped more bombs on Vietnam than all of the bombs dropped in World War II by any country, by all the countries combined, all the countries combined that were involved in that long multi-nation war. America drops more bombs on Vietnam, Vietnam in, on North Vietnam. Westmoreland is the general working in Vietnam, and he begins with the idea of protecting the air base and that a good offense is the best defense, so they start being more offensive. Pakistan invades Kashmir. Kashmir is this undisputed area in the highlands between India and Pakistan. Um, you know, one thing you have to remember is that Pakistan and India were one nation um, in, in, you know, in the beginning before the British left. Um, it, was all, it was all one country. It was all India. So at that time, uh, India... Bangladesh and Pakistan were all just called India. After partition, uh, like 1950s, after World War II, they made a separate state for Pakistan for the Muslims. The Hindus had India, and Pakistan at that time also had what is they called it East Pakistan, but it's modern day, uh, it's modern day Bangladesh. So uh, later in the 70s, Bangladesh got their independence. But Kashmir was always a disputed area and remains to be this day some way that they drew it up, the lines were not clear, or it's just disputed. They have a lot of troops, India and Pakistan, they have troops all along that area. Um, so, Johnson's Great Society, improvement in race relations was being hindered by the cost of the Vietnam War. This great society, maybe something to learn more about as we go. He was trying to pass social programs and build programs for the cities, uh, but the money just wasn't there. I wonder if that had a lot to do with like housing projects or... Interesting. So the black man, oh, oh, a black man becomes a congressman. So the first congressman, a black, black man to become a congressman. Now, colonial and European rule in Africa was virtually ended at this point, is what Gilbert says. In China, the Red Guards, mostly students, were violent against anyone or anything capitalist. They attacked the British embassy and they set it on fire. Interesting, man. That year, the annual Congress of Soviet writers refused to invite Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And now he was, um, you'll hear, uh, Jordan Peterson talks about him a lot. Jordan Peterson, you know, has the, the big rise uh, on YouTube and all that stuff. He talks a lot about Alexander Solzhenitsyn, about this book called, uh, what was it, something, the, the Gulag Archipelago. Uh, and it was about, you know, in a sense, what happened in the, I think, Soviet, uh, Soviet concentration camps. It was basically the results of communism, communist thought, communist thinking, communist ideals. What is the, uh, if you run with those for a long time, what happens? And I guess in that book, as far as I understand, you know, he says really, well, you end up in a very dictatorial type of environment where human life is disregarded. It's um, really the group over the individual. Anyway, you can check out more about that, but 
Um, he responds by sending 300 of the delegates a strong attack on the Soviet censorship of literature. He was condemned as providing the West with anti-Soviet propaganda. Now, in Poland, a campaign is started by the government against the Catholic Church, which was accused of being uh, the bastion of international forces hostile to socialism. So it's really interesting. We see a lot of times religion uh, is a target of some of these political movements. Canada opposes the U.S. approach to Vietnam. The Australians will not send troops if the American bombings doesn't stop in North Vietnam, supposing that there's too many civilian casualties. 1967, uh, Mohammed, I think, Mohammed Nasser, Nasser of uh, Egypt tells the U.N. to remove its troops from Sania. They, they, they leave without protest. Uh, Nasser sets up a blockade on Israel and the states. He says, we're ready for war. Our basic objective will be to destroy Israel. Jordan commits to attacking Israel. A third of the Israeli planes are destroyed on the ground. So the Syrians and the Iraqis, uh, they also join the fight against Israel. Now in six days, the Egyptians were driven out of Sinai. The Jordan, Jordanians were driven off the West Bank. The Syrians were driven from the Golan Heights. Israel's victory was complete. Their land had increased three times its previous size. Israel puts its troops on the east bank of the Suez Canal. Four months later, the Egyptians attack an Israeli ship, killing 77. In retaliation, the Israeli artillery destroys uh, Suez City and destroys many of the oil refineries on the Egyptian side. Now, America and Russia had the ability to blow each other off the map. I mean, off the globe, just could just annihilate each other with the nuclear stockpiles that they had acquired. A probe goes to the moon and brings back uh, dirt and some rocks, which actually doesn't sound like much, but it's pretty actually pretty dang cool, pretty amazing feet, engineering feet. Saturn V rocket is also developed. The Apollo space capsule is sent into orbit. In New York, people are protesting to stop the draft. Um, yeah, draft dodgers. People don't want to go to Vietnam, you know, it's become unpopular. Um, a 22-year-old burns himself to death in protest, the fourth person to do so in a year. So we see that a lot. I was, I was thinking that image from um, that Buddhist monk. But other people do this as well. Politically, people were not happy with the outcome of Vietnam. Uh, Senator Fulbright said that there was a problem of 32 million dispossessed children uh, sacrificed to the requirements of the war on Asian communism. So, you know, one thing about Vietnam that was different than like World War II is now you had, uh, it was televised. It was maybe the first televised war that the Americans had seen. And, um, you know, now we, you know, we, we censor that to a large degree. Anytime that there's war, you know, it's interesting when I lived in the Middle East, those news outlets, they, I mean, they'll show blood, people dying, people, you know, blood all over the place, yelling, screaming, rolling, moaning, in pain. Um, you know, maybe that's how they were doing it in, in the 60s, too, in America, before they decided to make some, some changes on how they're going to run the news. Something to think about. Might be interesting for a test, test question. Um, chapter 10, changes of, oh, the challenges, I'm sorry, challenges of modernity. So 1968 now, the Hanoi government, this is the North Vietnamese government, declared a truce for the seven-day period around the Tet holiday now. If you haven't heard about the Tet Offensive, this is what the Tet Offensive was. Tet was the, the new year, and uh, but this was a deception. Actually, what they did, they took 70,000 Viet Cong troops. They attacked American and South Vietnamese forces. Uh, the televised, uh, they televised the battle on uh, American television for for about six hours, about 50 million people were said to have watched what happened. Within 24 hours, the Americans super, uh, restore power in Saigon, <clears throat> excuse me, which was the capital in South Vietnam. Now, there was a Viet Cong troop that was taken prisoner, and he was shot in the head. Now, a journalist put this on TV in America and basically freaked out. This is what I'm saying. I mean, with the, the news, uh, the reporters, the video cameras losing control of, of the narrative of the war. Of course, there was brutality on both sides, but not everything was put out on the front page. The inherent bias of journalism, I suppose, is what I said. You know, that was my comment. Journalism, media does have a lot of power to script, you know, to post or to not. Well, then, 50,000 Viet Cong troops are killed, but there's also a lot of casualties. Women and children, women and civilians. So Al Gore's grandfather, a U.S. senator, uh, said that we were destroying the country we were trying to save. And Johnson is still intent on winning the war in Vietnam. President Johnson, he decides not to run for a second term. Johnson is also secretly negotiating with uh, the North Vietnamese. His main reason for stepping down was that he had a massive heart attack.
previously, and, and he was worried about the stress literally killing him. So Robert Kennedy, the brother of JFK, won the Democratic nomination. He, like his brother John, was also assassinated. Robert was killed in L.A. after speaking at a hotel. He was shot in the head and he died at the age of 42 years old. Now the Americans try to make some peace deal, but the North want a unified Vietnam, and they will not settle for a, sep a separation of the South. So the, the fighting drags on. Richard Nixon, Republican, he becomes president. There was still an anti-Jewish sentiment in Poland, especially after Israel's victory earlier that year. In Czechoslovakia, a man named Dubček comes to power. He believes in socialism with a human face, uh, but he's summoned to Moscow. He does not want to follow the example of Hungary, who turned its back on the Warsaw Pact, effectively withdrawing from the Soviet Union. Dubček wanted to create a more hospitable form of communism, but Moscow hated this idea. The Soviet troops gathered on the Poland-Czech border and then crossed into Czechoslovakia. So 500,000 troops are on the, on the Czech soil. They arrest Dubček, and there are 500 Soviet tanks in Prague. Now, Dubček and his officers are released from prison, but they had to agree to change the society. They implemented book censorships, they took down all anti-Soviet ideas, etc., etc. You can imagine. Basically, they had no choice. In Moscow, there were demonstrations against the treatment of Czechs and the invasion. These protesters got gathered in the Red Square in Moscow. The leaders were arrested and exiled. No Western journalists were allowed to cover the events. Now, Martin Luther King, he's in Memphis, and he was actually shot and killed by a white man while standing, uh, standing on his hotel balcony. After his funeral, the affirmation, uh, sorry, affirmative action laws were signed, where government contractors were obliged or obligated, sorry, um, obligated, I misspoke, to give preference when hiring uh, blacks to other minority groups. Huh. The first black woman is voted into the U.S. Congress, huh? Cesar Chavez head of the United Farm Workers Union. So Cesar Chavez is very celebrated uh, among migrant workers in California. California has uh, vast areas of agriculture, uh, grow a lot of the fresh produce that Americans consume. And a lot of that industry is really dependent upon cheap labor uh, during harvest times uh, from Mexico. Uh, groups of workers who come in are willing to take a, a wage less than you know the standard minimum wage, as far as I understand it. Paid under the table generally and uh, as far as I know, this is still kind of, it's basically common practice. But Cesar Chavez, really, he was a, you know, he stood up for those people. He advocated for them, for their rights, for their condition. And uh, so we celebrated for that. 61 nations signed the Non-Proliferation Act. This has to do with nuclear arms proliferation. But France doesn't sign. Eight weeks later, uh, France detonates her own uh, hydrogen bomb in the South Pacific. Isn't that interesting? It's getting scary. Uh, a Czech student burns himself to death in protest against Soviet occupation. Then there are lots of anti-Soviet protests. The Soviets threaten military action. They, the protesters try to shut down um, you know, public life, the economy, etc., etc. So I don't, you know, I'm really curious. I think back to like the Arab Spring. I think back to these, a lot of different student movements, usually it's young people that, that you know, do these, put these on, want to push for change. They're not part of the establishment yet. I was wondering how effective those are. Well, while Nixon is president, he tries to get out of Vietnam. He tries to do social reform programs. There is a, a moon landing. Nixon tries to end Vietnam in a year. You know, he pulls out 25,000, then he pulls 35,000, then 50,000 troops out. In China, the Cultural Revolution was coming to an end. A strict sense of communism would take its place. You know, we see that Catholics and, and Protestants are fighting in Ireland and in Britain. And I, I wrote why, you know, I, I guess I've never really understood. I mean, it can't just be about theology. It has to, in my mind, it always has to be about land or economics or labor or something. Um, and that these, you know, denominations are more just a, an identifying side of things or tying back to ethnic. But I'm not sure. I want to find out about that. Nixon says that he destroyed all biological warfare stocks and that new biological weapons would only be used for defensive purposes. There was also a ban on DDT, which was a, a, a chemical, you know, for crops, um, insecticide. In the Soviet Union, uh, the Pravda was an important newspaper, okay? So the North Vietnamese forces are not the same as the Viet Cong. The Viet Cong were actually the weaker of the two. 
So Kissinger, he tries to make an agreement, but it doesn't work. Nixon announces the withdrawal of 150,000 troops at this point, leaving only 350,000 remaining. But two days later, the Cambodian capital, Phan Phen, was being threatened by local communist attack, and Nixon wanted to help. I don't know why. Was it altruism? Altruism? Was it... Why? Why? What, why? What, what, what did he have to gain by that? Maybe he wanted to get at those, um, that supply line, the, uh, that the North Vietnamese were running through Cambodia and Laos. Maybe that was the motivation. And he general, anyway, General Abrams succeeds General Westmoreland in Vietnam, and he said that it was important for the communist bases in Cambodia to be eliminated. Hmm, maybe there's our answer. Otherwise, they would pose serious threat to the remaining American troops. So Nixon agrees. They send 20,000 troops and warplanes into Cambodia. The bombing raids are restarted over North Vietnam. Government officials protest. A student killed at Kent State. Uh, he's killed after he attacks a, nas a National Guard building. So, uh, it's overreaction. I mean, I don't know. He attack it with rocks. He attack it with bombs. I don't know. Um, the guardsmen fire shots and kill him. There are unusually large protests in D.C. The American troops cannot go into Laos, but they bomb the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So, there we go. In Israel, there's... Uh, a sinking of minesweepers. So, of course, there were mines off the Suez Canal. Uh, they call this continued conflict the War of Attrition. So, art artillery, the PLO, which is the Palestinian Liberation Organization, is headed by Yasser Arafat. Again, remember, Palestinian. Uh, we know, we'll see it, that eventually Yasser Arafat takes up kind of residence in Lebanon for a long time. Uh, but... Anyway, the PLO, they claim responsibility for the crash of a Swiss airliner that had 17 Jewish passengers. The PLO guys were sneaking into Israel for violent purposes. There were 100,000 Palestinian refugees living in Jordan. It was not beyond possibility that the PLO could overtake King Hussein of Jordan. Jordan was typically, I mean, uh, at least in modern times, like, uh, I always hear of it as like a very, you know, neutral, democratic state, uh, you know, not engaged in, say, like the Sunni, Shia type of things. Um, a lot of like Western nonprofit organizations uh, set up shop in Amman in the Jordan. So uh, there's medical advances, there's nerve replacement, there's hip replacements, there's heart surgeries, there's environmental factors of like factories, there's chemicals, there's the you know the green movement, environmentalism becomes more more and more something that people are aware of. Car f fatalities. Also, Congress starts talking about clean cars. You know, we see a lot more people are on the planet using up resources, fossil fuels. New York Times releases a government strategy that was contained um, in secret, which were the Pentagon Papers, related to the Vietnam War. Government protests, but the Supreme Court upheld the newspaper's right to publish. So again, losing control of the information, of the narrative, of the story, of the information. In Pakistan, Sheikh Mujib works for separation. Prime Minister of Pakistan encourages them not to push for separation of East and West Pakistan. That's what we were talking about before, 1970s, West Pakistan. Uh, was modern day, you know, what, Pakistan, but East Pakistan was Bangladesh, modern day Bangladesh, or what becomes Bangladesh, but that area, that land. Uh, and you have to remember, I mean, can you think about running a country where you're separated by your enemy? There was no way to drive from East to West Pakistan without going through like China or India. So that's always something to think about. Very difficult to rule if you got to take a plane to get from, from one side of your country to the other. U.S. and China both send arms to Pakistan. Nixon also starts selling goods to China. The Viet Cong using Soviet weapons cross into the demilitarized zone. The South Vietnam Vietnamese, uh, they flee the South. There's only 6,000 combat American troops in the South. Nixon writes that the South Vietnamese are not putting up much of a fight for their freedom, and he wonders why. He knows that air support is not enough. But there must also be ground troops to hold the ground. Nixon goes to Moscow to talk about nuclear weapons. Soviets had mustered, had mandated the teaching of atheism in schools. That's always really been one interesting thing to me. Why is, why is communism so reliant upon getting rid of God? How does that work into the whole framework? Why is that a necessity? Why is religion so bad, so off-putting? Uh, I suppose that, you know, I mean, other nations, they keep religion and they also put forth the you know the allegiance to the state allegiance to the country they push patriotism you know uh, through other means without destroying religion altogether or banning it but soviets don't at least in this situation uh in czech the nuns were just allowed to do religious work but could uh, do work in hospitals or or something quote-unquote useful is what they were told so nixon stopped sending draftees to war finally uh, a negotiation is reached 
North Vietnamese lose a million. The South Vietnamese lose 181,000. The Americans lose 55,000 people. Uh, but the car kills 414,000 during this year. POWs were released, apparently. Then we have the Watergate break-in. This is um, Watergate Hotel, uh, DNC. It, was, it wasn't the DNC. It was uh, Nixon. And Nixon was trying to, to basically get the... the um, so Nixon was actually a member of the uh, Republican Party. So he got in trouble for breaking into the, yeah, the, I want to make sure it was right, the Democratic, uh, basically, uh, you know, files, stealing the information that they were having for their, uh, you know, their run of the presidency. Can't do that. So anyway, uh, left-wing government of Salvador Allende in Chile. Uh, then a guy, Pinochet, seized power of Chile. Uh, Allende is found dead. Pinochet is an anti-Marx and anti-communist. So now, 1973, the Day of the Atonement is AKA the Yom Kippur War in, in Israel, or, um, you know, for anyone who is like, uh, doesn't like the term Israel, I understand, uh, I learned during my time in Lebanon that, uh, a lot of people, they don't like it called that. So I'm just, I'm calling it that because that's what the book uses. Uh, but I understand a lot of people, they, they refer to it as, you know, like, uh, uh, occupied Palestine. So there's still, even to this day, contention about the legitimacy of Israel, the, um, the, the lines, the, the wars, there's the, um, Israel is, is putting people in all these, um, encampments, they're not encampments, I can't remember what they're called, but you know, they're, they're basically trying to take over lands through just building, you know, new buildings and, and on and on and on. So still a big, big current issue. But anyway, Yom Kippur War, Egypt and Syria launched offensive, com uh, combined offenses. Egyptians cross the Suez Canal and into Sinai. The Syrians take the Col Golan Heights. But they're stopped after 48 hours. They push back the forces to the original 1967 ceasefire line, and then they can put, continue to push, the Israelis do, into Syria and into Egypt. Now, Solzhenitsyn, who we talked about was the writer, is recommended for the Nobel Peace Prize for his book, The Gulag Archipelago. The Arab-Israeli War of October 1973, a.k.a. the Yom Kippur War, uh, Israel's hated. I mean, Israel is hated. And, but they also, man, to make you know, matters more volatile, they announce that they have nuclear capability. Nixon's successor is Gerald Ford. Solzhenitsyn is actually uh, imprisoned, and he's exi exiled to Germany. Now, the South Vietnamese have a struggle, struggling economy, but they kill a lot of the northern army troops. The Americans scale back the supplies being sent to the South Vietnamese. Uh, Chinese supplies to north uh, were growing and growing and growing. Um, so it's kind of an economic battle in that sense, uh, troops and tools and ammunition and equipment. Greek and Cyprian governments get into a spat. There were Greek soldiers inside Cyprus. Cyprus is a very, very small island um, you know, south of Greece, just west, really just west of like Syria and Lebanon in the Mediterranean. Beautiful place. It's like a little island nation, you know. Uh, they speak Greek, Greek-speaking people, and Christian, uh, Orthodox primarily. Uh, Yunus, Muhammad Yunus, the Grameen Bank, Grameen means village. He wins a, he basically set up like a, a small loans type of thing. Um, so that's what he was really famous for. He got in trouble later. Uh, There's corruption and then fraud within that thing. Uh, but he did win a, a Nobel Prize for uh, micro lending, basically. The North Vietnamese press closer to Saigon. Ford cannot get Congress to send more troops. He is forced to withdraw the next day of the South Vietnamese surrender. The U.S. condemns the uh, Pinochet government in Chile. I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong. In Angola, which was a previous Portuguese colony. It's now independent, but struggling financially. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, the original prime minister of India, his daughter uh, becomes the prime minister, and her name, Indira Gandhi. Now, Franco continues to rule Spain with an iron hand. Basque and Catalan separations fell under uh, the full rigor of the police. So these are areas in Spain. When Franco dies, King Juan Carlos comes. He frees 500 political prisoners and allows for the formation of political parties. The World Health Organization, the WHO, claims uh, the end of the viral smallpox. A friend of mine was telling me recently, if you want to keep up, I mean, it is a, you know, important when taking this test to be well, well rounded, up to date. He was telling me about that there was a huge new smallpox. Was it smallpox? No, it was polio. So, different polio outbreak in India after the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation had tried to come up with this new 
vaccine for polio and actually started like this huge outbreak of never before seen polio, a new strain he said basically um, caused by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, their medical work, and it's being tried in the Supreme Court. Um, uh, India has basically taken them uh, to court for, it was like thousands of kids, paralyzed, loss of life. Apparently it was a real, real bad situation. Check into that if you're interested. The UN had doubled in size since its inception. Jimmy Carter is the born-again Christian become president. Some people say he's one of the worst presidents America ever had. Um, Christian guy, uh, high morals, you couldn't really find anything against him, you know. Uh, but I guess it didn't translate into being a great leader. North Ireland secretary, uh, sectarian violence continues. Two women create a protest movement, the Peace People. These peace marches swept through Ireland. The IRA attacks the people's peace marches. Interesting. In Lebanon, 1976, the civil war breaks out between Muslims and Christians. The PLO, who is under Yasser Arafat, also is now based in Lebanon. In Iraq and Libya sends troops to support the Muslims. Beirut was divided with Christians in the east, Muslims in the west. There's maybe 6,000 Syrian troops who enter Lebanon. The Arab Peace Force increased to 30,000 men. They also enter Beirut and establish a quasi-military rule. About 40,000 people are killed in the fighting. And I, I mean, I lived in Beirut just recently, and you can still go to places and see the walls. You can go to this, uh, the, the bullet holes in the buildings. You have concrete buildings, so you know you can still go and see those. It's not like wood buildings construction that we do in the West with siding. And so you can see that. You can also go to the places where, you know, the old boundary lines of East and West. Uh, then the Air France passenger airliner was hijacked. They eventually go to, uh, to Entebbe in Uganda. And you can actually just watch a movie about that. Um, so you can get the basically the idea of uh, how Yohanan Netanyahu was killed. He was part of the Israeli force. And later his brother Benjamin Net Netanyahu would become the prime minister of Israel. So that movie is really interesting. Spoiler alert. And so positive if you don't want to know. But basically they say, look, uh, did, did this affect uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's policy? Did, did it, did it, you know, encourage him to act certain ways because, you know, he lost his brothers, um, his brother in this type of thing. They'd say, heck yeah, it did. It did really change the way that he was open to working or closed, they would say, to working with Arabs. Um, in India, Indira Gandhi's son, Sanjay, has a five-point plan that would have wide-reaching social effects. With the exception of the Soviet Union, the area, era of imperialism and colonialism was over. The British released the Seychelles Islands. Uh, Seychelles, Seychelles, Seychelles. Yeah, I think so. I think it's an island chain. Check out the, the picture. I'll try to put a picture up of it. Natural disasters kill, kill more people than war. And so that's always really interesting with, with uh, this author. He's always talking about war, war, war. And then, hey, but realize, you know, a lot of people are dying of disease, of automobile accidents, natural disasters. Um, the U.S. pays to see the end of the smallpox in Ethiopia. That's great. 1976, Apple Computer is founded. Uh, the withdrawal of the Americans from South Vietnam sent a message to South Korea about how she would need to protect herself from uh, communists in North Korea. I thought that was an interesting insight. Steve Biko was the founder of the moderate black conscious movement. In the Horn of South Africa, there was a war between Ethiopia and Somalia. The Etrian forces, Marxists, overran the Ethiopian strongholds. France's last African colony, Djibouti, became independent. So I, I made a mistake recently. I met someone who worked in humanitarian work in Djibouti. And I was like, uh, what, what country is that in? They're like, oh, it's its own country. <laughs> so, you know, hey, it's okay. We're learning. Sri Lanka, formerly uh, Ceylon, uh, you know, I guess also uh, changes names or becomes independent. So Sadat from Egypt and Menachem Begin from Israel start talks. President Carter invites them to talk at Camp David in Maryland. All the other Arab leaders refuse to attend. Camp David accords are signed. It was a long-term plan, but it made provisions for the Palestinian settlements. The first time... Uh, which the Israelis had admitted up to that point that there are legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. And it, it was called, uh, what was called their just requirement. Uh, Zaire is, is named, is the former Congo. Chad becomes independent from, from France uh, since 1960, their civil war. The UN realizes its major problem is continued uh, 
and basically the problem of poverty. People support Ayatollah Khomeini and protest the people were able to shut down oil production. All oil exports came to a halt in an attempt to dispose or depose the Shah. Khomeini's government is established. Iranian students break into the U.S. Embassy and take 66 American hostages. The Americans forbid buying Iranian, Iranian oil, and they also freeze Iranian assets. The Shah leaves the U.S. after getting medical treatment, so that was part of the thing. He went to the U.S., um, and people thought, oh, he's, he's giving out secrets, he's, he's a spy, he's, he's, you know, he's joining with them. They didn't believe that he was going there just for medical treatments. Hey, you could see how it, you know, it'd be hard to say one way or the other. Anyway, he's exiled to Panama. Menachem Begin, uh, Prime Minister of Israel, I, I think, yeah, I think he's the Prime Minister. Uh, in order to get, get peace with Egypt, he, you know, he may be the Defense Minister. Don't quote, don't, don't quote me on that. Sort that out. We'll, I'll, 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 uh, I'll clarify that when I edit the video. Uh, but Begin, in order to get a peace deal with Egypt, gives up the Sinai Peninsula. The Americans promised to give Israel some assistance to military airfields, foreign aid package as well. Commercial flights begin between Cairo and Tel Aviv. So Cairo, Egypt, Tel Aviv, and Israel. And both leaders receive the Nobel Peace Prize. The Afghans kidnap a U.S. ambassador. Uh, then a, a group of 30 Russians visit a Muslim shrine in Kandahar murdered. Hafiz Ullah Amin's government was overthrown. Soviet troops move in force. They install uh, Babrik Darmal. In Turkey, the Sunnis and Shiites have a violent clash. Uh, Suleiman Demeryal was the head of a right-wing coalition. He allows the PLO, remember this is the Palestinian Liberation Organization, to open an office in Ankara. Ankara is a city in southeast Turkey. Margaret Thatcher in inherits the North Ireland terrorism problem. There's an important British man is killed, and so the British and the Irish governments agree to work together for a solution. That was kind of the, the catalyst, I guess, for them to come together and figure out what are we going to do about this. Pope John Paul II begs them to turn away from violence. The Albanian-born Mother Teresa goes to Calcutta. She wins the Nobel Prize. That's the end of chapter 10, and we're somewhere right in the late 19, probably end of 1970 at this point, since Gilbert likes to do chapter by chapter, almost kind of in, in decade, decade by decade. Okay?